YouTube. Today we're going to be unboxing the DJI Spark. So we have in front of me the DJI Spark Fly More Combo and the SD card that is included by DJI when you order your kit. So this is what you get in the box. You'll get a brown box usually and unfortunately there wasn't very much padding in my box. They were just loose dangling around in the box but I mean this should hopefully have a lot of padding in it. Now as you can see the corners are dented which means that the box itself has received some damage in transit, which uh, is a bit of a thumbs down for um, DJI really, that's a bit crap, but uh, what can you do? So let's open it up. So we've got a um, acetate seal around the box and we also have a uh, sticker that uh, is to be cut when opening to show that you've opened the box. Um, not that that really means anything because they'll open the box anyway, even if you return it and you say you haven't opened it. So, open it up, get rid of the rubbish, and we're left with the box. Now, on the back of the box, there is another seal here, so you need to cut that. That's quite a strong sticker, that one, actually, and I believe that's all you need to open up. So, the box is about the same size as the Mavic, actually. Um, which is a bit surprising, but uh, let's uh, slide out some of the major components in here. So we have a carry case, which has got weight to it, so it's potentially got stuff in it. Um, whereas I believe the Mavic, it was all separate. We've got this, which I presume is the spark, and this, which I can only assume is, wow, I was gonna say power adapter, but actually it seems to be about 300 different language manuals. Let's see if I can pop this open to show you all that paperwork <laughs> i mean that's a lot and it's heavy that's a lot of paperwork but guess what I'm not going to be reading that because who reads the instructions <laughs> so aside from that there's not really anything else in the box surprisingly empty so it comes essentially pre-packed for you so let's open this up i can only assume this is the spark this is really light and it's even got dji branding on it let's give it a go Ta-da! Wow, it's tiny! Absol I didn't even realise how small this was. I guess this is what you would get if you ordered just a plain spark. Um, it is a basically a micro um, Mavic, but without the folding part. Um, interestingly enough, it comes with one battery installed and one battery in the case. I assume that this is because it's the Fly More combo. I imagine if you got the standard one, you only get the one battery. I'm not too sure. It's got the sticker on the back for the first time button on the battery. This allows you to remove the battery. Um, feels pretty good. And here we have the gimbal, which is padded and stabilized. Uh, it doesn't have yaw, unlike the uh, Phantoms and the Inspires, but uh, it does still have um, pivot, uh, what is that, roll and elevator, what would that be, pitch, yeah. We've got some tabs covering over the sensors. It's really quite cool how tinsy this thing is. So we get two spare sets of propellers in the um, casing that just slide out to be fitted. I'll leave those in there for now. Uh, ooh. Yeah, that's all right. I was gonna say, once you open it, you'll never shut it again. Cool, so that's the drone itself. A little bit of silica in there. I'm not really gonna keep that in there, to be honest. Then we have the whopping 16 gigabyte SD card. I'm actually, again, thumbs down DJI. Seriously, 16 gigabyte SD card in 2017? Are you joking? Even Samsung with their 360 cameras give you a 128 gig card. So 16 gigabytes? I mean, hell, the Phantom 4 Pro, you can burn through that in minutes, literally minutes. Oh, oh well, round aside, this is the case. It's quite heavy. It's gotta have stuff in it, I mean, the charge for one thing. Okay, so we've got this front zip pocket. And in the front zip pocket, we have, whoops, a, uh, just a micro SD cable, nothing, a micro SD, a uh, micro USB cable, nothing special there, really. Um, very Apple-esque. Um, what else do we have? We have, ah, multi-battery charger. So this is for three batteries. And uh, it has a proprietary DJI connector, unsurprisingly, on the uh, side. And on this side, it has a micro USB port, presumably if you want to try and charge through USB, although that's going to take forever. So, uh, 
Generally, I'd avoid trying to charge through USB. Uh, right. Pop that out there. And now we're on to the main compartment. And in the main compartment, we have more foam and silica gel. Let's pop that all out. Ooh. So, in the first part, we have the mains adapter. Fairly standard, except the nice thing is it's got two USB ports, so you can charge other things whilst charging your spark. We have prop guards, which is quite neat to have included. I'll uh, open one up for you to see. Uh, so there we are, two prop guards, which uh, just click onto the arms, although they are going to reduce your flight time. Now this is a region specific plug because I've got a UK Mavic uh, spark. I've got a UK plug. And aside from that, there's nothing else in there on that side. Now let's pop over to the controller side. So here we have the controller. Surprisingly, again, different from the Mavic. Um, there's nothing else with the controller, just a compartment separator and more foam. Um, yeah, there's nothing else there. That could be convenient, I suppose. And the controller, a lot more um, basic than the uh, than the Mavics, really, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, it does the job though. So you fold these out to uh, attach your smartphone. The um, connector for the cable goes there, I presume. Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. Although that's a bit confusing. If that's where the cable goes, then have they included a male-to-male cable. Um, hmm. That one I'm not sure about. I have not checked to make sure. Um, there's another little compartment here if you want to store things. But aside from that, that's everything in the box. So um, yeah, DJI, Mad, uh, DJI Spark. Two batteries in the Flymo kit. I'm a bit disappointed that it's only two. Why not three? You know, come on, DJI. What's going on here? Do your game. Um, not so sure on how to plug the uh, phone into the controller. Um, I presume that's to charge the controller. Does that mean that the phone connects wirelessly to the controller? Like the uh, old DJI products? I don't know. I will have to find out. So I will get back to you in just a moment. Well, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again, and then if you really don't succeed, read the manual. So uh, let's give a go at reading the manual. So interestingly, um, all these manuals all pertain to different parts of the drone. So this is the Flymo combo specific. This is the DJI Care piece of paper. This is for your propeller guards. This is for the battery charging. This is for the remote controller. This is for the spark itself. Um, this is a disclaimer. And this is for the battery. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the remote controller one because that's the one that I don't know how to operate. So, okay, so interestingly, it says here to charge the controller, you have to use the USB ports provided on the mains adapter. So you don't, unlike the um, Phantoms, you don't have a dedicated plug, which means that that cable is gonna have to be used for the controller or the batteries. You can't use it for both at the same time, obviously. Um, that's a bit of a disappointment. It just means you need to get an extra controller. It says here, the remote controller can reach, reach a maximum transmission distance in a wide open area with no electromagnetic interference at an altitude above 120 meters. So yeah. Pretty obvious stuff. Don't fly in a walled city and expect the same range. Remote controller pairing. Power on the aircraft and the remote controller. Can Ah, uh, yeah. So this is a lot like the Phantom 2s. You have to wirelessly connect your device to the Sparks controller. So that's going to limit your range in a lot of ways as well because the phone's Wi-Fi is going to interfere with the, map, the Sparks. Unless, of course, the Spark is running on 5.8, which is potentially the case because of the limited range of the drone. So there you are. Um, well, I have to say, I would get a Mavic. And here's the reasons why. The Spark, when put back together into its assembled state, is about the same size as the Mavic. 
in terms of storage because the Mavic's case isn't that big and it stores the Mavic itself as well as the accessories you require. Whereas the Spark, you have to have the separate stuff. Um, yeah. The other thing is the Mavic, of course, has higher resolution video, can fly further, can fly for longer, um, and has uh, some cool accessories like uh, the USB hub that allows you to power USB devices off of the Mavic's batteries. So, can't say I'm all that impressed with the um, decisions DJI has made, but then again, you have to sacrifice things for size. And because DJI decided that they were going to force you to use this Spark controller rather than the Mavic controller, it also means you have to use the inferior way of connecting to the drone. As far as the controller goes itself, feels just fine. You know, it's not going to feel quite the same as the um, nicer controllers. Photo button on the right, video button on the left, your um, tilt wheels, and I'm not sure what that's for, just a programmable switch, I presume. Um, pretty standard buttons, yeah. Nothing more to it, really. Cool. Well, let's pack it all away, and then we will leave it there. So, one last thing. Let's have a look at how to attach the propeller guards to the map, uh, to the spark even. So um, spark opens, well this sort of latch opens up here and I assume that yeah you just twist it on and there you are, propeller guards. Now I don't know how often you're really going to need to use them, I suppose it depends on your skill level. Um, I can't see myself using these very often except in very tight flying conditions. Um, yeah, mm, I'll have to leave the opinions to you. We'll be doing a, um, or I rather, I will be doing a uh, video comparison of the footage from the Spark compared with the Phantom 4 Pro, uh, just because I don't have a um, Mavic at this point in time. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So, where does the SD card go on the Spark? That's the question. Um, I'm assuming, yeah, there we are. So there's the micro USB port where you can charge the battery that's plugged into the Spark. And there is the micro SD card slot. So let's put that SD card in there. Yeah, I don't know. I would I would say buy a Mavic, guys. You know, obviously there's the monetary difference between the Spark and the Mavic, but I think the Mavic is twice as good as the Spark. Spark hands down, just down to the design. But uh, that's your opinion to make, and uh, you'll have to do that at some point. But. Um, Thank you for watching. So I've just found something out uh, with fiddling, which may be in the DJI manual, but uh, I don't know if it is, but it's pretty cool. And that is that uh, despite DJI saying to connect to the Wi-Fi on the controller to then connect to the Spark, I've found that you actually can do it via USB. So if we look here at, at this phone, uh, you can see the Spark is connected and it's showing me. Now if we go to Wi-Fi, you can see that the Wi-Fi on the phone is actually switched off. So, it is in fact connected via USB. Now, the thing is, the reason I'm doing this, and the reason I try to find out if it works via USB, is partly down to the fact that when I connect via Wi-Fi, the connection is horrendous. So I'll demonstrate that for you now. So, watch, as I disconnect USB, boom, connection to the drone is lost. So, now let me connect to the drone via Wi-Fi. So I'll turn the Wi-Fi on. And there we are, Spark. So I connect to Spark. Wait for it to connect. It takes a little while. And just to, for anyone that might mention, I have got Smart Switch switched off. So, we're connected to the Spark. And the phone's saying there's no internet on this connection. So now I go back to DJI Go 4. 
Notice how it says no signal, and then suddenly it thinks there's a signal, and then it goes aircraft disconnected and all sorts of rubbish. If I get the controller close, you see I get a signal back, but it's extremely intermittent. So, uh, well, it's pretty crap, to be honest, the Wi-Fi connection. Luckily, I have the OTG cable from my Phantom 4 Pro, which allows me to connect to the Spark via USB. Thank you for watching. And have a nice day. I tell you what, it's a pity that this doesn't come with a handle because in reality, this is going to be the easiest way to transport this around due to the fact that you've got these two separate pieces. Meh.